In this problem, we're told to find the tension in the two chords shown in this figure. Neglect the mass of the chords and assume that the angle theta is 33 degrees and that the mass m is 190 kilograms. So let's actually go ahead and write that down first. So we're given that theta, our angle is 33 degrees, and we're given that our mass m is 190 kilograms. All right, cool. So we know this is going to be, let's just actually label it on our drawing too. So this is 33 degrees, this is 190 kg. So how are we going to go about solving this problem? So what we're trying to do is find the tension in both of these chords, right? So I went ahead and drew this line right here. It's not in your drawing, but essentially this just represents the Y component. This is the X component, but essentially we're trying to find the tension in this chord and in this chord that are going to be holding this mass up essentially. And how do we do that? So the way we're going to do this is by taking the sum of the force in each of these directions and you'll see why it works. So some of the force, let's actually do Y first and then some of the forces in the X. And what you should know is since this is still, the sum of the forces have to be equal to zero in each of these directions. So zero and zero, right? But what are these forces going to be? Let's start with the y direction, right? So we're trying to find this tension force. So if we can find the y component of this, right? Or you'll see how it works. So essentially, what are the y components in this thing acting on it, right? So we have mg going down right here, right? mg, but what does mg have to be equal to? Well, what it has to be equal to the y component of this tension force, and why is that? Well, think about the other forces in this uh, thing, right? We have this x component, right, this tension, but keep in mind it only has an x. There's no force in the y, so this doesn't matter, and then this x component isn't going to matter. So essentially, it has to be equal to this uh, y component tension force, or the y component of this tension force. So this is mg, right? This force is mg. So we know mg, and so uh, keep in mind when we label these, mg, since it's going down in this case, it's going to be negative. So things that go down are negative, things that go up are positive, things that go right are positive, things that go left are negative. You can think about it that way. So 0 is going to be equal to, so I'm going to label this, let's say this is t1, this is t2, right? So this is t1, this is t2. Uh, this could be called t1y, and then this is t1x. So we, need to know, we know t1y, right? t1y minus mg is going to be equal to zero, right? Because we just add up all the forces. T1y is positive because it's going up like this. And then mg down is negative. So T1y, uh, T1y minus mg is equal to zero, which means that T1y equals mg, right? Which what, it's what I said earlier, these two are equal. So what is T1y? Well, it's going to be the y component of this. How do you take a y component of a force with an angle like this? It's just going to be uh, the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle right? Because you use sine to get uh, the y component. So it's going to be T1y is just T1 times the sine of 33 equals mg. What's mg? The mass, 190 times uh, 9.8, which is the gravity, right? And what, what you should see here is T1, which is the tension in this chord, right? What we're trying to find, one of the things we're trying to find, if we divide by sine of 33, it gives us that, right? So T1 equals this right here. And if you go ahead and do that, 190 times 9.8. Here, let me plug it in my calculator, actually. 190 times 9.8, and then divide by the sine of 33. But when you do that, yeah, so when you do this, you're going to get 3418.77, right? And then this is newtons. But I'm just going to go ahead and round to 3400. Just round however your teacher wants you to do. But 3400 newtons. This right here is going to be the tension in this chord. Right, so 3,400 newtons, this is your answer to, I guess, the first part, the tension in the first chord. Now we need to do this chord. How do we do this one? So think about how we did this one. We looked at the y and we knew it was equal. Well, what does that mean for this one? T2 is an x component. It's got to be equal to this x component, right? Because both of these have to be equal to be holding this up, right? And then this force, there's no x component on this force, so we don't have to worry about it. So essentially, just T1x has to be equal to T2, and you'll see why that is, right? Because 0 is equal to T2. And you can call this T2x, but really it's just T2. And then minus, since this is this way, right, it's going to be minus T1x, which means that T2x equals T1x. So these two, the tension in this has to be equal to the tension in this, or else it would like move in the x direction, you know? So yeah, so uh, we can go ahead and do this, right? Because we know T2, right, or yeah, so T2 is what we're trying to find. And so T1x, what's going to be the x component of this? It's going to be um, T1, which we just solved for, uh, 3418.77 
times the cosine of the angle, right? Because cosine is for the x component, right? So this gives us T1x. So 3418.77 times the cosine of 33 gives us the x component, and it's equal to this. So just plug this in your calculator. So let me go ahead and do that. So 3418.77 times the cosine of the angle, 33. So when you do this, you should get 2867.22, whatever. Uh, and I'm just going to round to 2900. Yeah, so 2900. Do what your teacher wants you to do again, but 2900 newtons, uh, right? Newtons because it's a force. So T2, uh, this one right here is 2900 newtons. And then this one right here is 3400 newtons. So that's going to be the forces in these two, or the tension in these two chords. But yeah, all we did was to look at the y components and set them equal because we know it's in equilibrium, it's not moving. But yeah, so 3400, 2900. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully you found this video useful.